Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football video. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down every single game from Sunday, talking about all that happened, everything about that relates to fantasy football, my thoughts on what happened, and everything. So before I start the video, I'd like to ask you guys, could please go down below and click that subscribe button because not only is it going to help me, it's also going to help you because I'm going to help you guys dominate the whole fantasy football season tomorrow, waiver wire video. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's going to be all these matchup videos, trade videos, all of that, defensive streams, everything that you guys want for your fantasy football team and your fantasy football success. So let's get right into the video. The first game I'm going to talk about, Tennessee Titans versus the Cleveland Browns. Now, I don't know if it's just me or if I'm on some crazy pills, but I thought the Cleveland Browns were going to smoke the Tennessee Titans. I thought that the score may look similar to what it was, but in reverse. No, the opposite happened. Marcus Mariota looked like a comparable quarterback. He went 14 for 24, 248 yards, 10 average, 3 touchdowns, 0 picks. QBR, 53. Now, obviously, that's not the greatest quarterback rating, but he did play pretty good and probably would have been an amazing start in fantasy. He finished pretty well in fantasy this week, but you all know who started him? Absolutely fucking no one. But you know who did get started? Baker Mayfield, 25 for 38 for 285 yards, one touchdown, and three picks for 27.2 QBR. Now, before, uh, the thing with Baker is like, this was just a down game, right? Everyone's like, oh my god, Baker fucking sucks. Like, he doesn't suck, okay? He had one bad game, and then everyone's gonna get pissed off about how they drafted Baker, and he played like shit, guys. Do not panic. It was just week one. You need to understand that some wacky shit happened in week one, and wacky shit's gonna happen every week. Some guys you think are gonna have amazing games have down games. That's just how it is. But you cannot panic and think Baker is gonna be terrible just yet. Another guy on the Cleveland Browns that people are probably pissed off about. That would be Nick Chubb. 17 carries for 75 yards. That's a pretty good stat line, right? Yeah, it is pretty good, but he didn't score a touchdown because Dante Dontrell Hilliard, a rookie running back, vultured his touchdown. One carry for four yards and a touchdown. Now, that should have been Chubb scoring there, so you got screwed out of one touchdown. Now, about if you calculate this, 75 yards, that's 7.5 points. He caught the ball... Three times, so you add three, three points to that. So we scored you like 11 points, about 11 or 12 points, right? And yeah, that's not that good of a game for a guy who drafted in the second round, but say he scored a touchdown. Now you're out about 18 points and you're feeling pretty good. So I would not really be too pissed about Nick Chubb. Next week will obviously be better. Now for the Tennessee rushing game, Derrick Henry, 19 for 84 and a touchdown. Now I t you guys are probably pissed. Nick, you told me not to start Derrick Henry. Blah, blah, blah. You said that, he that he's bad. Well, I do agree. I really don't think he's good, but he played a good game, and I regret telling you guys not to start him. Clearly, you're going to just have to start him every week and hope he's good. I, personally, I just really don't think he's that good of a running back. Now, there are things to talk about here that seem pretty important in the passing game here. Derrick Henry caught the ball and scored a touchdown. Pretty important on two targets. A.J. Brown played pretty good while only getting four targets. Delaney Walker played, played pretty solid this game, scoring two touchdowns. So pretty much the only guys you're going to want on Tennessee are A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry, and Delaney Walker. Just pivot off of everyone else. And I doubt Mariota will ever have that good of a game again. And I doubt Derrick Henry will really have that good of a game again. Now on the, o the uh, Cleveland passing game side, Odell had a pretty good game with that uh, with his wrist all iced out. He had that watch on, you know, trying to look all flashy. And then they got fucked. So, I mean, like, uh, what does that have to do with anything? It has nothing to do with anything. Seven receptions, 70 yards look pretty good. Probably you want to probably have a, a touchdown in that game, but still scored you like 14, 15 fantasy points. So not too shabby. Jarvis did pretty good too for where you picked him. Scored you about 10 points. Big David Njoku came in big, scored you that touchdown. You're probably happy about that. Nick Chubb, like I said, getting work in the passing game. So overall from this game, what we could really learn is not to get mad at Nick Chubb. He will do better next game. I promise you that. Don't pivot off of Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield will also be fine. And you're probably good with OBJ. Derrick Henry, on the other hand, I don't know if you'll be fine with him down the stretch. And Marcus Mariota will probably end up playing like shit. So now we're going to go to the next game as long as ESPN can load for me here. Now, if you guys want to hear about the Monday night game, or the, the games from Monday night, I'm making that video later. The games are about to start in like 20 minutes, so hopefully I can get that video, this video done before that. So the next game, we have my Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this is a game that if you watched, you probably would have just killed yourself if you were a Dolphins fan, because it is 59 
to, to 10. Okay, guys, it was very embarrassing. Nothing to see here, really, from the Dolphins' side. Fitzpatrick played bad. You weren't starting Fitzpatrick. You likely didn't start anyone on Miami. Uh, Kenyon Drake barely got any uses. Balaj got more fucking carries, but negative one yard. So who really wants anything to do with this Miami team? Parker had a pretty solid game. Gasicki got some usage. Preston Williams. It was just a certified shit show from everyone on this team. Don't You don't need any of these Dolphins guys. They're just not going to be very good. Kenny Drake may be able to have a solid season, though. And Lamar Jackson is obviously the big guy to talk about here. 17, for tw- or, uh, 17 completions, 20 attempts, 324 yards, 5 touchdowns. All right, guys. Now, I don't know. Call me crazy, but that's never going to happen again for Lamar Jackson, okay? You cannot think that Lamar Jackson will ever, this year, throw 5 touchdowns again. He may score 5 touchdowns, sure. May run 2 in and throw 3. But I don't even think that'll happen. I think this is Lamar Jackson's best game of the year against the shittiest team in the NFL, the Miami Dolphins. They are flat out terrible. Okay, so you can't really make all that much from this thinking that Lamar Jackson is going to be some type of god or something. But he's obviously good in fantasy and was worth your pick. If you can somehow pick him up, go ahead and do that. Mark Ingram obviously had a pretty good game. Not too much. There was a split, obviously, because Hill got the ball uh, seven times. Gus Edwards got 17 times. So there is still that running back by committee type deal. But Mark Ingram obviously was the back to own. Two TDs for him. 107 yards looked pretty solid. Now, this is probably the biggest thing to talk about in this game, and that is between Mark Andrews and Marquise Brown. Mark Andrews, eight receptions for 108 yards and a touchdown. Pretty solid. He caught all eight passes thrown his way. And Marquise Hollywood Brown. Five targets, four receptions, 147 yards, and two touchdowns. Now, the thing you have to understand about that is Marquise Brown's usage was, when he was on the field, his snap count was not that high. Now, on Twitter, I have the numbers out there. You can go look. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but he wasn't being, I'm going to talk about that more in the waiver wire video, but he wasn't used all that much. So my thinking is that this is just going to be the, the pickup where you make it, you play him next week, and you just feel dumb when he catches the ball four times and doesn't score two touchdowns or doesn't get 150 yards. So I'm kind of fading that pick all right there. But otherwise, Mark Andrews does look like a great pick. Well, I'm not sure he's going to score a touchdown every game. Lamar clearly loves throwing the ball his way. So that is definitely a positive to look at from this game. And just, if you're playing, the Dolphins are just terrible. So any quarterback against the Dolphins is going to destroy. That's what I really got from this game. Now, as we wait for this to load, we will get into the next game. Falcons at Vikings. Now, this is a game. Now, I watched all these games on Red Zone. I didn't really exclusively watch one game, except for I kind of watched the Giants game a lot, and I also watched the Jets game a lot because I live in New Jersey, and that's what's on TV while I was watching Red Zone on my laptop. So, Matty Ice played eh, so-and-so. He went 33 for 46, 304 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Not that good, but just okay because at the end of the day, he did good enough to make you not feel bad about yourself because you started an okay quarterback. Kirk Cousins, on the other hand, on the other squad, or on the Vikings, went he went through the ball 10 times because it was a run-heavy show here from Dalvin Cook. Eight rushes, or I mean eight uh, completions out of 10 attempts, 98 yards and a touchdown to Adam Thielen. Pretty solid there. Obviously not amazing in fantasy, but in a game where they could have thrown the ball, where I thought it would be more pass-heavy, Kirk would have probably had an amazing game. Now on the rushing side, Devontae Freeman and Edo Smith, it's looking like a goddamn head-to-head running back by committee. Devontae Freeman getting only 19 yards, Edo Smith with 31. They didn't really have much time to run, though, because they were down big early. 14 points by Minnesota in the first. In the second, 7 points by Atlanta, and then 7 in the third by Atlanta, so it wasn't looking too hot. The only 12 points scored or by Minnesota, the only 12 points scored by or by Atlanta came at the end of the game. Now, the probably the biggest thing to talk about here is Mr. Dalvin Cook. Now, I know, Nick, you fucking idiot, you, you hated Dalvin Cook. I know I hated Dalvin Cook because of his injury. Season long, I don't think Dalvin Cook will be worth the pick. But I know when he's healthy on the field, he's going to eat 21 carries, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. He looked amazing yesterday. He passed the eye test. He looks good. He's a guy that is probably going to be people people trying to trade for. They're going to sell high on him because his sorry ass is going to get hurt. Alexander Madison 
nine carries for 49 yards. He is the clear handcuff. If you have Dalvin Cook and you don't have Madison, go and pick him up right now. Madison is going to be amazing if Cook gets hurt. Madison's looking like a solid back there. Now, on the receiving end, Julio really didn't do anything for Atlanta. Six um, receptions for 31 yards and a touchdown. He saved you with the touchdown, but he really, at the end of the day, didn't play or didn't get all that many opportunities to get 100 yards. Now, I think that a lot of people may panic and be like, Julio sucks now. He's too old. No, he's perfectly fine. I think Julio will probably still have an amazing year. So it's just one game, one bad game. Thielen and Diggs had pretty bad games. Obviously, Thielen scored a touchdown, so ended up with a better game. Diggs, two receptions for 37 yards. You're probably pissed off at him, but it was bad game script for them. In games where the Vikings are not destroying in the fucking beginning of the game, Diggs and Cook or Diggs and Thielen will have a better game, and then Cook will look more on the sadder side. Overall, good game, though, from Cook. And don't worry about Julio or Matt Ryan or Kirk Cousins. They're all going to still be pretty solid when the year comes to a close. Now we are heading into the next game. The Buffalo Bills versus the Jumbo Jets. Now this is a game that I have a lot to talk about here. The the um, the Bills, I believe, turned the ball over four times. And Super Bowl Sam Darnold could not finish the game. Sam Darnold looked atrocious out there. I know. 28 for 41 and a touchdown. It's not the greatest. It's pretty fucking bad. He scored a touchdown, sure, but they just didn't really do anything. Le'Veon should have been able to put up more points. Only scored he scored zero touchdowns, only sixty yards. I just caught the ball six times. Oh, he scored a touchdown receiving. My bad. Six receptions for thirty-two yards. Uh, well, the his reception really was a touchdown to the the tight end, and then they called it back, and then Le'Veon Bell uh, caught a pass and scored. He had a pretty okay game, I would say. Definitely nothing to worry about from Le'Veon. The Jets' defense, if you're you're plan, plan on playing them next week, avoid that. Quentin Williams is hurt, and another one of their players is hurt. So the thing to really talk about here is Mr. Josh Allen and Devin Singletary and John Brown are the guys I'm going to be keying in here in this game. Also, Jamison Crowder, 14 receptions for 99 yards on 17 targets. What type of crazy shit is that? I don't think you need to go ahead and pick him up because it's not going to be like that every week, but goddamn, what a glory play that was if someone started him. So Josh Allen, 24 for 37, 254 yards, one tutty, two interceptions, but he really scored two touchdowns because he also rushed one in, 10 uh, rushes for 38 yards. Now, Singletary looked amazing. Four carries for, or I'll talk about Allen first. So I think Josh Allen had a pretty solid game. Obviously, if he didn't throw two picks, would have looked way better. I think next week they're playing the Giants. It should be, a, he should demolish the Giants. I'm fully confident in Josh Allen going forward. He had a pretty solid game and they came back and won. So all props to Josh Allen. They didn't play good at the beginning. I think that they really figured it out in the second half. So that may be what Game two against the Giants looks more like. Devin Singletary needs to get more carries. If he's out there on your waiver wire, pick him up. Four carries, 70 yards. Amazing. Josh Allen, 10 carries, 38 yards. That's what Josh Allen brings you. 30, 40, 50 yards a game rushing. Extra points for your fantasy team. Frank Gore got 11 touches, only 20 yards. The old man doesn't seem like he could do it anymore, but go ahead and uh, keep. I would not play Frank Gore, but I know a lot of people will. Now, John Brown out of Buffalo played pretty get pretty well I should say seven receptions for 123 yards and a touchdown he's a guy must pick up I told you guys to draft him you didn't draft him maybe pick him up if he's still available that's about all for this game the Jets really choked and that's pretty funny so let's get into the next game here guys the game the real game in the NFL is starting in about 10 minutes I don't know when you're watching this Probably today, actually. I'm probably going to upload it right after this and then watch some of the game, do some of my homework. You know, that's just an insight into my life. Now we've got the Skins at the Eagles. Now this game looked like two halves, two completely different tales. The first half was... Oh, oh, oh. We don't want to watch this highlight, yo. We don't. We're not trying to get copyright striked. All right. So the first half was all Skins. Ten points in the first, ten in the second, right? And then... Mr. The Philadelphia or Philadelphia Eagles, 7 points, 14, then 11. The Philadelphia Eagles ended up winning. Carson Wentz played amazing. Oh, Nick, you hate Carson Wentz. I don't like Carson Wentz, but that's for season long. The whole season, I don't like him. But, I mean, week in, week out, as long as he stays healthy, he'll be pretty solid. Now, Case Keenum put up a solid game, 30 for 44 for 380 yards, 3 tutties, 0 interceptions. Both him and Wentz played quite well. Darius Geis, 10 for 18. 
Okay, Darius Geis got hurt. Pick up AP or Chris Thompson. I think they should be able to get it done. Chris Thompson, obviously, in the receiving game, seven receptions, 68 yards for zero touchdowns. Pretty solid in fantasy or PPR. Vernon Davis had an emotional touchdown. He scored uh, after his grand. Someone in his family died. It was pretty emotional, pretty sad. Good on Vernon Davis. As long as Jordan reads out, Vernon Davis should still be a solid option. Now, the one guy to talk about here is Mr. Terry McLaren. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. I've never even heard of this guy. I'm being completely honest with you, but he looks like a pickup. Five receptions, 125 yards, and one touchdown. He looks like he's going to be used heavily by the Redskins, so I like that. I would go ahead and add him. And then we're going to talk about the Eagles now. Even though the Eagles the Eagles won, the Redskins are not as bad as I thought they previously were. That's also something I like to add. So the running backs, when it comes to running, this is just a straight up running back by committee. Until, Like I said, it would be until a couple of weeks into the season. I'm not starting any of these guys. I told you guys to start Jordan Howard, probably completely false. Do not do that. Just wait on the running backs for a bit. Miles Sanders will eventually emerge. He got the most carries and the most snaps on the team. Deshaun Jackson played out of this world. Eight receptions, 154 yards, two touchdowns. And I know he played amazing. So now you're thinking, let me play him next week. Now next week he's going to get three receptions or three targets and zero points because that's just how Deshaun Jackson is. He's boom or bust. And if you and if you hit those wrong weeks, he busts all over your fucking face and does nothing for you instead of your opponent's face. So Zach Ertz had a pretty okay game. Five receptions, 54 yards, zero touchdowns. I thought he would play better if I'm being honest. But the Redskins did look better than I thought. The, the Eagles defense completely failed us, guys. I know I told you guys to take the Eagles defense and they completely failed us because of how shit they played and how good the Redskins played. So don't the Eagles defense is just bad overall. I d- I don't know why I believe they're good. They were, they've were they never been good. And this year, or in that game, just proved it completely. So now we're going back, I believe. Oh, I should not have done that. Now we are going back. Oh, I don't think I showed anything that was all that important, so it's okay. Sorry, guys, that I have to fucking shift through all this shit, but that's just how it is. If I want to give you the games with all the stats, it's all good. So go down below, guys, and click that subscribe button, because we still have one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, eight games left. So you guys better be strapped in to listen to this shit, because I'm going to keep going. It's probably like a 40-minute long video, but it's very informative, and I know you're enjoying it. So let's get right into this game right here. Rams at... Panthers, guys. I told you to start Cam Newton, and Cam Newton failed us all. Fucking 239 yards, which is solid. Zero touchdowns and one interception screwed us right in the ass right there, guys. Jared Goff did not play well either. 23 of 39 for 186 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Played good enough for them to win, but it was really just a tale of the running backs. Todd Gurley played well, got fucked because he couldn't score two touchdowns. Malcolm Brown scored two touchdowns. What to do with Malcolm Brown? Find out in my video coming from tomorrow about the waiver wire. I don't know if I'm all in on Malcolm Brown unless I have Gurley. Robert Woods, um, where's the passing here? That's what I really want to talk about. Robert Woods, eight receptions for 70 yards. Now, if Jared Cook, or not Jared Cook, Jared Goff was able to throw the ball correctly, Robert Woods would have had over 100 yards. He had 13 targets. He was wide open multiple times. Probably would have been at about 120 yards. Probably could have also scored a touchdown. Cooper Cup looked amazing. Seven receptions for 46 yards, zero touchdowns. And then, obviously, Brandon Cooks played like shit. Two, well, not really his fault, but he, two receptions, 39 yards. Definitely a huge disappointment this week for a guy who I thought would play well. Tyler Higby straight up vultured a touchdown from these receivers, scoring a touchdown. Gerald Everett also playing. Todd Gurley only caught one pass on four. I believe he ran out four times to catch the ball, which is kind of concerning because he was running out a lot more than that. Running routes, obviously, as a receiver, not as a receiver, but out of the backfield. So that is concerning for Mr. Gurley. Now we talk about Christian McCaffrey, the best running back this week in fantasy football. 19 carries, 128 yards, and two touchdowns. That's not that great. I mean, that is great, but I mean, he really gets that, the key from the passing game. 10 receptions for 81 yards, no touchdowns. He looks fucking beautiful. Certified beauty, Christian McCaffrey. I told you guys he was worth a first pick if you didn't take Saquon. So we love Christian McCaffrey. He played great. The one thing to talk about the passing game also is DJ Moore looking like the better receiver than Curtis Samuel or getting the more usage. 10 targets for DJ Moore, 7 receptions, 76 yards, and a fumble, I believe. I don't think it shows that on here, but he fumbled the ball. And Curtis Samuel only 3 receptions for 32 yards on 4 targets. Didn't look like Cam was targeting him all that much. I'm not pivoting off of Goff or Cam. Still start both of them next week. Don't be too worried about week one. 
Don't be too scared. The Rams played well. Let's hope that next week Gurley doesn't get vultured if you've drafted Gurley. Next game, the one of the bigger games of the week, Chiefs at Jaguars. Nick Foles goes down, put on the IR. Sorry that my phone is vibrating. Chiefs got put, I mean, not Chiefs. Um, let's see. Fuck, what was I saying? Nick Foles put on the IR. Gardner Michu, the, this guy looks crazy. 22 for 25, 275, two touchdowns, one interception. Pretty solid game from Gardner Michu. Nick Foles looked amazing. Now he's hurt. Now I, that does hurt my um, opinion that D.D. Westbrook was going to be amazing. Now baby, baby Chark, do, 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 do. D.J. Chark, four receptions, 146 yards, one touchdown. May look like the uh, the guy to have on uh, the Jags, even though I still do like D.D. Westbrook. Hopefully D.D. and Gardner Michu or the guy that they added, Josh Dobbs, I believe is his name from the Steelers, plays good. I think Gardner Mishu will end up being the starter. Now, things to talk about on the Kansas City side. A lot to talk about here. Pat Mahomes playing amazing. Broke his ankle, I believe, or sprained his, sprained his ankle. Played amazing on one foot like a goddamn god. Patrick Mahomes, 25 for 33 for 378 yards, three tutties, zero picks. Played amazing. You should have expected that. He's Patrick Mahomes. He's amazing. Now, the running backs, that's something to talk about here. LaShawn McCoy, 10 carries for 81 yards. Damian Williams, 13 carries for only 26 yards, but he got the touchdown for the team. Now, the receiving is also something to, to talk about. Sammy Watkins, nine receptions on 11 targets for 198 yards and three touchdowns. One of the better wide receivers for this week. That is never going to happen again, except for maybe the next couple of weeks because Tyreek Hill is injured. Stay woke on Sammy Watkins. But I also have a sleeper here. Mr. Me, Cole, hard man may come out and play amazing in the absence of Tyreek Hill. So it's definitely some guy that I may end up picking up. Other than that, Damian Williams played pretty solid because he got work in the passing game. Damian Williams was a solid start. Sammy Watkins played amazing. Travis Kelsey really dis- didn't really disappoint because obviously he still scored like 10 points, three, three receptions, 88 yards. But Pat Mahomes tried that no-look bullshit. No look, threw it, fucking missed Kelsey wide open in the end zone. Should have just looked, thrown it to him. But I'm not worried about Kelsey. I am worried about uh, Tyreek Hill, like I said, maybe out multiple, up to six weeks, I believe, with the injury. Nothing else really to talk about in that game. The Jags obviously got fucked by the fact that Nick Foles got hurt. They could have been a pretty good team. Now, here to talk about the Colts versus the Chargers. A game that went to overtime, I believe the first OT game of the day. Yep, where the Chargers ended up winning. So, Jacoby Brisket, Jacoby Brissett, this 21 for 27, 190 yards, and two tutties. Looked pretty solid out there. I told you guys Jacoby Brissett was not as bad as people perceived. I like Jacoby Brissett. Phillip Rivers and his 13 kids, 25 for 34, 333 yards, three tutties, one pick. Looked pretty solid. Definitely a solid guy to play in fantasy football. The running game, or the running backs in this game, had definitely something to say about it, though. Marlon Mack, 25 for 174 and a tutty. Who needs Andrew Luck if you're Marlon Mack? I thought Marlon Mack would be affected by that. Who knows if he will be in the future games, but this game he looked amazing even without Andrew Luck. Now, Austin Eckler, 12 carries for 58 yards and a touchdown, but Eckler got the rest of it in the receiving game. Two re- receiving touchdowns for six on six receptions and 96 yards, over 170, I believe, combined yards and three touchdowns. Amazing work from Eckler and Mack. T.Y. Hilton also not phased by the fact that Andrew Luck is not there. Eight receptions, 87 yards, and two touchdowns played. Great. Eric Ebron got fucking de- got um, screwed by the refs. That was a touchdown. They called it a no touchdown. And then Keenan Allen played pretty good for the um, Chargers. And then Hunter Henry had an okay game, four for 60. Nothing to write home about. And then Mike Williams got hurt at the end of that game. Pretty solid showing from both teams, though. Jacoby Brissett obviously played pretty good. And then Mack and Eckler. Eckler, very unexpected to play that good. Same with Mr. Mack. Next game to talk about, the Bengals at the Seattle Seahawks, baby. 21-20. to The Bengals and Andy Dalton looked like they may have been able to win this game. If we could just see the goddamn stats. Andy Dalton, 33 of 51 for 400 yards. 400 yards. 
Two touchdowns, zero picks. Looked great. The thing to talk about in this game, though, is Mr. Giovanni Bernard and Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon only got six carries, obviously, because they were down, and then ended up hurting his ankle. Hopefully, he is good for week number two. Reports are he may be good for week two. If not, it's going to be a short absence. Should be back week three. Pick up Giovanni Bernard if you... Uh, have Joe Mixon. Tyler Boyd looked pretty solid in this game going 8 for 60. No touchdowns because John Ross, the fastest man alive with 7 receptions, 158 yards and 2 touchdowns. Andy Dalton and John Ross connected multiple times. Looked pretty good. Overall I think that the Cincinnati Bengals might be a better team than we perce- or, uh, perceived, perceived, whatever that word is. So it was a pretty solid game. Tyler Boyd looked good, like I said. John Ross, he's never going to play that amazing again, probably, but he may be worth a pickup. Russell Wilson, four, Russell Wilson, 14 of 20, 196 yards, two tutties, zero picks. The player to think about in this game was DK Metcalf, and or on this side of the ball, obviously with Seattle, was Chris Carson and DK Metcalf. Chris Carson, 15 carries for 46 yards and a touchdown. In the running or in the passing game, Chris Carson, six receptions, 35 yards and a touchdown. Played amazing that game. Penny really did not show up all that well this game, so it looks like it is Chris Carson's backfield like I I kind of saw. I told you guys to draft Carson. Carson played great. DK Metcalf over Lockett is something to talk about, though. Mr. Lockett, not play, not getting only two targets in the game, whereas DK Metcalf got six. Obviously, Lockett got that touchdown to save you on a 44-yard pass for one t- touchdown. Obviously, saved the day right there. Could have been terrible if he put up a zero, a goose egg on your ass. DK Metcalf, four for 89, looked great. DK Metcalf... Uh, he had surgery in the offseason or in the preseason. Still played amazing. DK Metcalf, uh, probably a solid pickup. Obviously, someone who's probably drafted in your league. Played pretty well. Played better than I believed he would. Next, next game. You know what I'm saying, guys? Now, if you've made it this far, I'm a fucking amazed. I hope you've been eating some popcorn, staying hydrated. So let's get into the next game. Click that goddamn subscribe button. Four games left, guys. The final fucking stretch. Let's talk about the Giants and the Cowboys, a game I watched a lot of. Uh, mostly to make fun of my friends who are Giants fans. So let's scroll. Let's this fucking shit load. Here we go, baby. Eli Manning, three lie, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Looks okay. Daniel Jones tagged into the game at the end, three for four for 17. Nothing really to write home about from that. Dak, Dicky Dak Prescott, four touchdowns, 405 yards, played amazing. Like I said, guys, Dak Prescott is good, a good quarterback. Nothing really to write home about that there other than Dak has played amazing. Nothing to talk about on the Giants' side, really. Ezekiel Elliott, 13 carries, 53 yards. That touchdown really saved him. Didn't have all that great of a game. Had only one target for 10 yards. Still okay, though. Tony Pollard got some a lot of usage here. I think as the week's... Uh, come closer, or as uh, more weeks go by, Ezekiel Elliott's usage will obviously be way more. Saquon Barkley in the rushing game, 11 rushes, 120 yards, no touchdowns, but he obviously scored a touchdown in the receiving game, four receptions for 19 yards. Wait, did he not score? Saquon didn't score? Oh, Lord, guys, I'm fucking stupid. Saquon did not score, still played amazing, though. I don't know what the Giants are doing. It looks like they're on, like, the fucking three-yard line, and they throw it. Like, they're so dumb. Just give it to fucking Saquon. Let's see. Oh, Wayne Gallman scored a touchdown. Maybe that's why I thought Saquon scored. Um, Evan Ingram had a pretty solid game. Pretty great game, actually. 11 receptions, 116 yards, one touchdown. And then Amari Cooper with one touchdown on Dallas. Michael Gallup had a solid game. Like I said, guys, draft. hopefully you guys drafted Michael Gallup. He's still probably someone you could pick up. He played great. Overall, from this game, what we really learned is that the Giants' defense is fucking garbage and that Dak Prescott is good. Next game, boys and girls. Hopefully you guys are learning anything from this. I know that a lot of guys who play fantasy, they just fucking look at their fantasy team, see that they they sucked, and they don't look at every game. They don't assess every game, all the yards, everything that happened, and that's really going to help you actually win when you're looking at all the numbers from every game, everything that happened. You'll feel like you know a lot more about what actually went down when you look at the carries and everything, not just the fact that that, uh, Carrion Johnson didn't do anything. Or that David Montgomery fucked you. You need to look at the numbers and everything to truly be able to figure it out. Now, the Lions at Cardinals. The Lions fucking are so dumb. Alright, guys? They are so goddamn dumb that it actually hurts me. The fact that they didn't win this game is outstanding. They should have just ran the ball with carry-on a bunch of times. Or just dumped the ball off. They actually screwed themselves and called a timeout. 
where they could have scored a field goal at the end of the game, and then end up going to overtime where they both just kicked a field goal, and then the game tied. Matthew Stafford played pretty good, though. Three tutties. Kyler Murray played like shit in the beginning, came back in the end. The fourth quarter scored 18 points, two touchdowns, one pick. David Johnson looking like the old David Johnson. Six receptions, 55 yards, and a touchdown. 18 carries, 82 yards, no touchdown, but one touchdown total. Played pretty good for fantasy. Now let me talk about the Detroit Lions. Carry on Johnson, 16 carries for 49 yards, no touchdowns. But what you guys have to understand is he ran against... Stacked boxes, I believe, 75% of the time, him and C.J. Anderson. So if Matt Patricia would just figure out maybe don't run it when there's a stacked box, maybe carry on will get more yards. And I think Matt Patricia will go back, figure out that he needs to give the ball to just carry on and not C.J. Anderson as much, and then carry on will end up looking better. Like I said, it's week one. The biggest guy to talk about in this game was T.J. Hawkengod. Hawkinson, six receptions, 131 yards, and a touchdown. If you don't have him, pick him up. All right, guys, Hawkinson is going to be good. Danny Amendola scored a touchdown. Nothing to write home about there, though, because Danny Amendola is useless in fantasy. Like, that's the best game he'll have all season. Nothing really to talk about in the Arizona passing game. Obviously, Larry Fitz scored. Keyshawn Johnson played pretty well. That That's not the Keyshawn Johnson you're thinking of from, like, 30 years ago. If you're a uh, older person and you know who Keyshawn Johnson is, not related at all. So, let's get into the next game here. So, let's hope that uh, maybe the Cardinals aren't as shit, and maybe the Lions aren't that bad. So, that's pretty good for fantasy football. So, now, let's get into the next game, as long as my computer would decide to load ESPN faster. Now, there is five minutes until the game starts in real life, but I am still going to go through every single game, because I am just that good at this. So, 49ers versus the Buccaneers. This may have been my worst call and everyone's worst call of the week, that Jameis Winston would be good this week. One touchdown, three picks, one pick six. He played fucking terrible. Jameis is a boom-bust quarterback, and you have to understand that. I drafted him in every league. I'm confident he will have enough boom games to win me the Super Bowl. But, I don't know, yesterday looked pretty bad. (laughs) One touchdown, three picks. I mean, he should have scored two touchdowns. They called him back. Two times when he threw it to Brait in the end zone. Ronald Jones played great. 13 carries for 75 yards. Looked good. O.J. Howard looked okay. Mike Evans looked terrible because he didn't get the ball enough. And then where's the other receiver? Chris Godwin, three receptions for 55 yards and a touchdown. The the passing game was just not working out. Either Jameis is terrible or the 49ers just have a really good defense. I really can't tell which is which. Jimmy Guap. Um... 166 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Nothing to write home about for G, uh, Mr. Jimmy Guop. Sorry, I smacked my mic. Tevin Coleman hurt. Matt Burita didn't play that good. R- Raheem Mus- Mustart, Mr. Mustart, Raheem Mustard, or how the fuck you say his name, is definitely a solid pickup this week. On the San Francisco side, Kittle got a touchdown called back. Eight receptions, 54 yards. Solid game for Kittle. No one on the receiving game, really anything to write home about. Fucking Pettis didn't do good. Godwin didn't do good. It was really no one except for Kittle. And then, like I said, Evans played like shit. Uh, it was just a bad game all around for fantasy, even though it was a pretty high-scoring game. Because the Baltimore, I mean, the not the Baltimore, the Buccaneers defense just looked way bre- better than anyone perceived it would be. So for that reason, it was just, it just looked bad for uh, for Jameis and for Jimmy Guap. It was just a bad game. Let's try to block that one out of our mind. Now let's hope Jameis is good next week. Jimmy Garoppolo, though, very still unproven to me what will actually happen. Now, the game of the week, America's game, you know, because everyone loves the fucking Patriots because everyone's a bandwagon fan. 33-3 to against the Steelers. The Patriots are winning the goddamn Super Bowl. Now, I don't know what I've been told, but what I do know is that the Patriots are actually going to win the Super Bowl. No one can fucking stop them. Tom Brady just unleashed on everyone. Even Julian Edelman went one for one in the passing game. Brady's going to be good in fantasy this year. 341 for three touchdowns. Played amazing. Sexy Rexy got some work. This is a running back by committee in New England, like I said. James White played pretty well. Five for 56 in the passing game. Four for 26 in the running game. Looked pretty solid there. Um, Philip Dorsett, two touchdowns. Flash Gordon scored a touchdown. And um, Edelman played pretty good. Six for 83. Nothing really to write home about, though, on the Steelers' side. Big Ben, 276 yards, one pick. James Conner, 10 carries for 21 yards. Nothing too special there. Big Ben, one rush, obviously, who gives a fuck. Jalen Samuels with only two rushes. So it's not much of a running back by committee like a lot of people tend 
to have believed in the offseason. I told you, James Conner is the only running back there that matters, and he is. Juju, 6 for 78, got banged up at the end of the game. X-rays were done. He will be fine. James Conner, 4 for 44. We need to just see this team play against a team that's not the Patriots, where they don't get destroyed. The other receivers, Dante Moncrief, got like 10 targets, 3 catches. That's embarrassing. Vance played okay, 2 for 40. I think in a game where the Steelers aren't getting skull-fucked, obviously everyone like Conner, Juju, and Vance McDonald will have better games. So, with that being said, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this video wasn't three hours long. Uh, click that subscribe button if you enjoyed. There will be a bunch of more videos tomorrow once I get back from class at 5 o'clock. I'll start grinding, start making them videos for you guys. I love you all. Have a great goddamn rest of your day. Enjoy Monday Night Football. See you tomorrow. Good boy!